Welcome back, everyone. So you guys know about the Philadelphia experiment, right? You know what happened there and what that was all about? Officially, it was nothing more than rumor or a myth. You see, no one knew about this until 1955, when a writer named Morris K. Jessup received letters from a man named Carl Meredith Allen. Allen claimed he witnessed a U.S. Navy destroyer escort, the USS Eldridge, become invisible. Or well, the story is it teleported from a Philadelphia naval shipyard to Norfolk and then reappeared in Philadelphia in 1943 through an experiment involving Einstein's unified field theory. Now I want to give you a timeline here because there are a few things that overlap and when I lay all this out for you I think you'll understand. You see folks, what was rumored to have begun on a Navy ship in 1943 now gets powered up beneath the Swiss-French border inside the world's largest particle accelerator. And what the world thinks of as an unfinished myth was never abandoned at all. It was perfected. Now, what Einstein was trying to do was he was trying to complete an equation for unified field theory. So let me see if I can explain this in simple terms. Physics recognizes four fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. Einstein spent the last years of his life trying to merge these forces into one equation, what he called a unified field theory. He believed if we could unite the fields, it would not only explain the forces we see, but also hidden possibilities like bending space-time, invisibility, or teleportation. Typically, we treat these forces as separate forces running in the background. Unified field theory would reveal the master code that connects all of them. And if you had that code, in theory, you could rewrite reality. You see? So, the rumors are that parts of this theory were secretly used in military projects and that some of those equations ended up in a test on the USS Eldridge of the Philadelphia Experiment. So the story goes that in October 1943, the US Navy tested equipment designed to cloak a warship from radar, but something went wrong. It was said that the Eldridge was glowing green, wrapped in electromagnetic fields and then it vanished. When it reappeared, sailors were in agony, some were burned, some went insane, and others were fused into the ship's metal hull. The Navy called it a myth, but around the same time, there was an official Project Rainbow, which in official Navy records was a radar countermeasure and degaussing program to protect ships from magnetic mines. Now keep in mind that all of this was rumored to be really about invisibility, teleportation, space-time manipulation, or time travel. So you hear names like Einstein, John von Neumann, 
whose work was in mathematics, physics, computer science, military research. He contributed to the Manhattan Project, working on explosive calculations and implosion designs. And he was allegedly involved in classified World War II research on advanced physics, including electromagnetic fields and theoretical studies related to space-time. He was also allegedly recruited to continue Philadelphia Experiment research, focusing on the human mind's relationship to distorted space-time. Later on, von Neumann built the foundations of modern computing, algorithms, and quantum theory all essential to the particle accelerators that CERN uses. Nikola Tesla is another name you'll hear when it comes to this and some claim he was consulted, others claim that his confiscated notes after his death influenced the Philadelphia experiment. Now one of the other things I want you to keep in mind is that CERN was founded in 1954. So after the mythological Philadelphia experiment in 1943, World War II ended in 1945. Then the US and its allies raced to capture German scientists. Under Operation Paperclip, hundreds of physicists, engineers, and researchers were secretly brought to America. Men like Werner Heisenberg, who were tied to Nazi nuclear and electromagnetic projects. And these people found themselves working in U.S. and European labs. Now Heisenberg's work was in quantum mechanics, energy fields, and particle interactions. There was a Danish physicist and pioneer of quantum theory who collaborated with Heisenberg on quantum mechanics and the philosophical interpretation of atomic physics. And they maintained correspondence during and after World War II, discussing atomic research and moral responsibilities of physics. This physicist was one of the leading founders of CERN, Niels Bohr. There was another key founder of CERN, Eduardo Almaldi from Italy, who had connections to German physicists during the 1930s and 1940s. And he worked on European scientific reconstruction, which included integrating former German scientists into collaborative projects. You know, you could go and look through the network of scientists like Walter Bote, Paul Hartek, and Georg Jus, who had been involved in Nazi era research and who also became advisors or collaborators in European scientific circles. And these networks provided technical knowledge and manpower for early CERN development, which you would find out was developed in stages from 1949 to 1955. So in 1943, you had the Philadelphia Experiment, the prototype for space-time manipulation. In 1945, there was Operation Paperclip, where Nazi and Allied scientists merged. And in the 1950s, European collaboration began leading to CERN. The same people, the same theories, just hidden behind different names. So what you end up with is this mixture of facts and rumors about massive electromagnetic fields, resonance chambers, and the ability to manipulate space-time. 
Now, isn't that exactly what Project Rainbow or the Philadelphia Experiment was rumored to attempt? And CERN is the perfected, globalized continuation of a 1940s experiment that went horribly wrong. Outside sits a statue of Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction and creation. Footage has surfaced of ritual-like performances on its grounds. Researchers joke about black holes and portals, but whistleblowers say that time anomalies and even Mandela effect phenomena could be side effects of CERN's work. Are these coincidences or are they clues? But folks, you see, the greatest overlap when it comes to all of this is that CERN isn't just a scientific lab. It's a ritual machine. Experiments are both tests of physics and enactments of a symbolic tradition. Remember, particle physics, high energy experiments, and space time manipulation are extremely abstract and something you can't see. It's invisible to the naked eye. They are working with energies or forces beyond ordinary perception. Scientists integrate ritualized sequences, symbolic structures, and ceremonial timing directly into experiments. Every test, every collider run, every alignment of machinery can be interpreted as part of a carefully codified magical procedure designed to focus intention and manipulate reality at the quantum or space-time level. The layout of CERN's tunnels, rings, and detectors all reflect sacred geometry or ancient occult esoteric designs. The names, symbols, and even colors encode hidden knowledge, turning the lab into a giant ritual apparatus. You see advanced physics, quantum mechanics, particle acceleration, space-time manipulation, these things deal with the phenomena that are nearly metaphysical. And when you combine extreme scientific knowledge with symbolic or ritual expression, you create or manifest results that you can't reach with equations alone. Project Rainbow and the Philadelphia Experiment didn't die with World War II. It evolved into a sophisticated secret continuation in civilian scientific institutions. Symbolism acts as a silent language, linking generations of physicists who understand the deeper meaning of their work without ever having to publicly admit it. Anyway, folks, that's all for now, and there is more to come. Please click the thumbs up button and like this video. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Everyone have a great day. And until next time, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.